You're listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature. Hi, this is Father Mark Bulos, and you are listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature podcast. This week, Father Paul proceeds with his discussion of Exodus, emphasizing the importance of hearing Scripture with the entire story in view. I am delighted to introduce Father Paul on the Bible as Literature podcast, Tarazi Tuesdays. Let's go back to Exodus. I tried, as I did in Genesis, to show you the entire view because the trouble with our reading is that we read a chapter and then we pontificate about it. That's what we do in our meetings. And I hear it time and again and again and again and again. And it's so hard to convince the people to realize that until you get to the end of the story, you have your story but not the story. And my classic example, let's hear it again and again and again and again. The way we handle, take the Orthodox especially, in their tradition of the Sunday of the prodigal son, suddenly the whole parable is about me, 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 the prodigal son. The trouble is that that's not the parable in the Bible. It's the entire story which is presented as a mashal, a parable, already in Ezekiel, as I explained in my commentary on Ezekiel. Actually, it's very impressive that he repeats the story twice. In other words, he says it three times, in 16, in 20, and 23. It gets ridiculous at the end. But scripture appears to our ears as ridiculous because we don't like it we like it our way that's what very often the students say to their teacher okay we heard it already why are you repeating it and the classic answer of father Paul it's because you're not listening how do I know because when I ask what I said last week you don't remember And that is part of the fabric of Scripture. And I said it very often, beginning with my comments on Mark, that Jesus is presented as the Son of Man, which means that he is the new Ezekiel. That's why he speaks in parables as Ezekiel. Remember, he was made fun of by being called Mumashel Mushalim, the parabler of parables. That's what the people called him. And then Jesus is the parabler of his parables. So the entirety of the story again is very important. And here, since I'm speaking in English to North Americans, you know. It applies in all languages we have it. The expression, hear me out, I like it very much. But then scripture is built in a way that does not allow you to say at the end of Genesis 15, I heard enough, O Lord. Because he's going to tell me, to tell you, hear me out until I finish with my Pentateuch. Hear me out. Hence my introduction to really realizing that Exodus is between Genesis and Leviticus and we cannot make out of it a movie the prince of Egypt and the salvation of Israel from Egypt and people talk like that and that is not allowed in scripture this is not the scriptural narrative but let's go to Exodus see how the text handles it we have the names of the sons of Israel 
which is technical terminology. Okay, Bene Israel, the children of Israel, and you have them in order, the twelve tribes. What is important here is that the people who went out of Egypt are the people who through their fathers came down to Egypt. These are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob. You see he has both names Jacob and Israel but he begins with that cluster of words of two words that become typical in the Old Testament the sons of Israel. Each with his household and he goes down through the name of the twelve and then all the offspring of Jacob I mean this English translation is lame compared to the Hebrew why because it gives the meaning and this kills me always when the people go for the meaning of there is no meaning you have to hear what the text is saying compared to all the offspring of Jacob were 70 persons whereas the Hebrew has all soul nefesh which is breathing the expression of the human being all or every soul of those who went out came about and it is in the plural Yose E Yerek Yaakob in other words every breathing of those who came out of the hip or the groin of Jacob it's very impressive and we heard about this several times in the book of Genesis lots of play here first of all the reference to the people are that they are nefesh just breathing animals but they came out and this verb is very important because it's going to control the book of Exodus the people came out and he applies to coming out out of the groin which is a reference to the genitals this is where you get the blessing of the elder of Jacob they were 70 and here again you have persons and if you're a theologian you just go about the personality and the personalism and the person and so on I heard this enough when I grew up in philosophy you know but again here we have the repetition of the nefesh he began by saying all the nefesh and he presents them as the number 70 number 70 is very interesting you have it reflected in the Septuagint 70 and so on it reflects the totality of humanity as reflecting the word of God to make a long story short you can refer to my books especially the one on Revelation the function of the numbers and so on seven is the fullness the totality of the divine seven spirits and so on you hear in the book of it. and ten is the totality of the situation as viewed from the human perspective you know how our numbering works on the basis of 10 when you get to 10 you go to 11 which is 10 and 1 and so on and so forth again I, I don't need to spend uh, too much time for you that those who don't know I hope they will accept it per se and thus the 70 is very important and it prepares for the integration of the nations the totality of the people there are commentators who try to find this reflected in the names of the peoples in Genesis 10 and they count them they end up with 70 or 72 and so on 
so it is right there in the text so all these are important even if you don't capture the ultimate uh, function of this you'll have to wait but if you begin with the English and the offspring of Jacob were 70 persons then you are somewhere in the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis in the class of 20th century philosophy and that as you well know by now irritates me because people tell me but I have a question I'm not interested in your question as uh, the Bishop of Toledo told me when he met me on the airplane do you remember Father Paul when someone raised his hand way back that was in the early 80s and said I have a question and your answer to him was you don't have enough vocabulary in Hebrew and Greek to formulate a question young man very interesting okay write it down as part of my legacy and then there is a hit there which underscores the importance of Joseph we're going to meet his bones again after he dies and so on Joseph was already in Egypt in other words Joseph did not come down with the rest of the children and we have covered this story we don't need to repeat it and this has been touched upon in Genesis where in Genesis 46 27 we hear that the sons of Joseph that were born to him in Egypt Nefeshonaim okay breathing two two breathings which is two children that's very interesting and I commented on that how you have the integration of the Gentiles there because his wife Asenat we said but let's repeat it here is the daughter of the high priest of On and thus his children whose names are Ephraim and Manasseh which is the heart of the biblical Israel are already half Gentile very powerful and all this is connected to the name of Joseph and the importance of Joseph is taken up in the following verse 6 of Exodus chapter 1 where we hear that then Joseph died and all his brothers you see he stands out of the people his uh, brothers okay he died and all his brothers and all that generation which is Dor in Hebrew door means a full turn it's like every generation is 40 years who keep turning around and around like the Ferris wheel that's the technical meaning of door in Arabic it is used to speak about your turn in line when you ask who, where are you in line that's how we say it in Arabic door so I want my hearer to get into the original Semitic. The Bible as Literature is a production of the Ephesus School Network.